The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's session. A uh, quick intro about me. I'm Leo Putnach, the Business Solutions Consultant with Toshiba at their Sydney head office. Um, my team and I work with clients of all sizes across diverse industry segments, helping them transition from um, manual, time-intensive, paper-based business processes and start their digital journey. So for everyone's session, uh, a recorded version of this webinar shall be available on our website for future reference. Also, we'd love to hear from you and shall be taking questions at the end of the webinar. So please send those through, our, uh, send through your questions in our chat box on the bottom right side. So why are we here? Some of you may be storing documents manually in paper form, simply want to save on office space. For some, the problem may be documents getting lost frequently, or we might be worried about unauthorized access or misplacing documents that may put you at risk of a compliance breach. Or, all, or some of you always feel like you are chasing a document or a piece of information, never able to find or locate what you're looking for in time. So at the end of today's session, I hope to leave you with some information and guidance on how you can better manage, maintain, and track your business critical documents, ultimately giving you more time and money to invest in your business and the things you want to do. So I want to start with some facts about a business functioning at the speed of paper and, and just set the perspective here. So if you look at the first one, 95% of business information is still stored on paper. Imagine that time it takes for you to search for information, not only you, your staff as well, if it is stored on paper. Now the second one says 15% business revenues spent on creating, managing, distributing documents. Now this is calculated based on your staff time. Now, this could easily be brought down to less than 5%. The savings could mean many things for a business. 60% of all companies still store, process, and store and retrieve documents manually. Too high, especially in today's disruptive environment, and basically you are at risk of getting left behind. A minor change in legislation, uh, a, a more innovative competitor, and you could be exposed really quickly. Um, 18 minutes is the average search time for a document. And this is just on average. With some of our clients, we've seen in excess of one hour or even more if the storage is off-site. Uh, another one says $220 spent on average to recreate a document. 15% of all documents in a business on average either get lost or misfiled, and it can get really expensive, more than the $220 mentioned here, to recreate each of these not to mention the legal implications considering the latest GDPR legislation. Um, the last one is especially key. 60% of employee time spent working with docu documents. And, um, you know, uh, it's simply translated. If you want to grow your business, you need to add more staff. And I don't know if that's the best way to expand or grow. Or if a staff member leaves, the knowledge of all the processes that they were handling leaves with them. How much time would it take for your new staff to get up to speed. Now, God forbid this happens to anyone, but we've had clients on the cusp of shutting shop because of many un unforeseen events. For example, um, in the aftermath of the earthquake in Christchurch, a legal firm, a client of ours, essentially lost all their documents and records and could only cherry pick handfuls from a window. Um, we were due to install our solution there uh, within a week's time. Uh, had we been able to do that, they could have been up and running in half an hour as against, the, I think, the six months to a year it literally took them to get back on their feet. Another example is of the uh, of asbestos contamination in a school storage room, uh, which meant all the records were inaccessible and essentially lost. Um, flooding at a government-funded vocational training institute uh, in regional Australia meant um, documents were destroyed, putting them at risk of receiving future government funding. Uh, a recent one in Sydney was theft at a not-for-profit client, uh, meaning documents uh, which had sensitive credit card information of their customers was lost. 
um, and, and that had a direct um, uh, impact on their trust in the market. Um, fire in a storage shed meant QA documents for healthcare organizations were lost for uh, were lost forever, meaning they couldn't sell the products those documents were linked to and leading to a direct loss of revenue. Now, I won't wish this on anyone, and I'm not saying this will happen, but why risk it and not be prepared? The reason most businesses still rely on paper processes in our experience is it's because it's the easy way out. So it's, it's nice to hold in your hand, easy to read, it's very user friendly. To file it, you don't have to scan documents, you don't have to walk up to an MFD, you don't have to rename files, navigate through different software systems to file them. Um, you can put them in a filing cabinet, pile them up on your desk, etc., etc. The problems start when you have to start keying in information off that piece of paper uh, into an email or into your finance system. Um, and you, you start looking for that document, you can't find that document, or that document has been misfiled and essentially lost, so you have to now recreate the document uh, after having spent a significant amount of time just searching for it. So the question is, what if you had a system that was easy to use, allowed you to file your document quickly, um, essentially complied with any legislative regulatory requirements, uh, and made life easy for those involved and, a jo and the job a joy to perform? And instead of you know walking over to your colleagues' desk with heaps of paper for them to review or approve, um, or, or, or sending attachments via emails, how about you could if you could share those documents via workflows, electronic workflows available via apps on your phone? A solution that at a single click allows you to trigger an approval workflow across your organization without having to get up and walk over. So uh, we've, we've actually reduced workflow approval processing times from two days to less than five minutes for our clients. Doesn't that make your business more efficient? So the question we need to ask ourselves is, is our business to an extent just spinning its wheels? Are we spending endless months, weeks and hours just managing paper records? So I have mentioned earlier, the current market environment is very disruptive uh, and, and that is accelerating too. Consider what happened to Nokia, Blackberry, uh, Blockbuster Video. E even the retail sector in Australia today is struggling to compete with the online marketplace um, as indicated by their declining revenues and, and consistent loss making. To the extent they are investing in an online marketplace themselves, um, I guess better late than never. But honestly, I think it's too late. It is a good thing, though, that the government itself is struggling to constantly update regulation and laws with all these new business models that are coming up. Um, take, for example, Uber, Airbnb, etc. Or we'd be in real trouble by now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, also, I've got clients in the uh, aged care vertical that we are working with at the moment that are looking at digitizing and automating as a consequence of uh, the recent, recent Royal Commission into their sector. So I guess what I want you to take away from this slide is I cannot emphasize enough how essential it is today to stay ahead of, to stay ahead of the curve um, because you can pretty much be caught out at any time. So let me show you how we can eliminate most, if not all, of these inefficiencies that are, sim simply put, a drain on your time and resources. So one of the problems with filing documents electronically, as I mentioned in my earlier slide, is the number of steps involved. If it's a piece of paper, we have to scan to email, then rename the document, then hope it gets filed in the correct location by the user. Or if it is an email document, then similarly, it needs to be filed manually into a network folder location, etc. So let's have a look at how we can eliminate those steps and file in a better manner. So I'm going to demonstrate filing via three methods. First, scanning direct from the MFD. Second, direct from email. Uh, and third, by nipping the startup paper flow in the bud by converting a paper form to a web form. 
So let's look at the first one here. So what I've done here is I have essentially simulated the MFD screen here on my computer. Um, I walk up to the MFD, I want to scan in. Um, as you can see, I've configured various workflows here. So you can scan to stuff like Google Docs, uh, scan your accounts, people invoice, scan um, to your contracts, scan to, uh, if you use a legal management system, scan to Leap, etc. So this solution essentially is an on-ramp. It can scan your documents directly to whichever source system you want it to go to. We've today got it set up to scan into our document management system. So I walk up to the MFD. I want to scan in a contract. Uh, I click on the scan to contract button. Uh, I can quickly put in information around the contract's details, such as the contract name, the contract number, contract date. Or if I was scanning uh, an invoice, I could scan in and capture the invoice details like the supplier name, um, or I could scan to Google Docs. Uh, I can classify the document name. I could class. I could pick from a pick list and choose the department, for example, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so as you can see, a couple of clicks. Um, I'm I'm capturing a certain amount of metadata right at the beginning of the process. I hit the scan button and that document will be received directly filed automatically in my document management system, which I'll show you shortly. So the next thing I want to show you is um, sc scanning and capturing directly from email. So bear with me for a second. Just bring that up at my end. So. Our uh, document management system comes with plugins for your commonly used uh, email tools such as Outlook, um, Lotus Notes, etc. Um, so I've, uh, I'm using this Outlook here. I want to file my emails to my document management system. I want to file any attachments I have to my document management system. That's really easy, especially given that we have a plugin. Um, so um, I can select the message. Uh, I can click on uh, transfer to the document management system via the button here on my screen. Or if it's a standard message for my incoming customer orders, for example, then I can uh, set up automated archiving. Um, the way I can do that is go into the configuration tab um, and I can choose how my documents get filed. So uh, I have the option to file to specific folders in my DMS. Um, I can choose from a pick list and say I want to file my emails and attachments as separate documents or I can fee file my emails with the attachments, etc. So this is all fully configurable, but just to give you an idea um, on how easy it is to set it up and start filing your documents from email. You don't have to depend on people to actually drag and drop stuff over. Um, you can it can be driven by a, a process that um, uh, that provides for some level of information governance, ensuring you always file the document in the right location. Um, and you can set up regular rules as well for emails that of with a specific subject line, with this from a specific sender that can be filed automatically as well. So that's that's really the example of filing directly from Outlook. What you can also do is if you want to access those documents and attach them to email for whatever reason, then you also have the ability to search for your documents within the document management system directly from your email client and attach those documents to your email and send them wherever they need to go. So that's the, that's the second example that I wanted to show you. Um, the third one is also really interesting is uh, if you look at the, the purchase requisition form that I have up on my screen, that's your typical paper-based form. Uh, and these are typically flowing around the office, uh, being approved by one manager after the other before it's sent to purchasing for actually procuring the product. So a typical purchasing process can take a long time. Um, and these documents can get lost and you know you create another requisition, put that through again. So it's it's really tedious and time consuming. So what I've done is I have simply replicated that purchase requisition form into a web form using our web form module that integrates directly with our document management system. So rather than filling up a piece of paper, uh, me as the uh, person raising the rec requisition can 
uh, use the web form on our company intranet website. I can look from uh, a pick list. I can look up the supplier I want to procure from to make it convenient for them to allow for uh, a minimal data input, I suppose. So uh, as you can see here, I'm typing out the name of a supplier. Uh, it auto populates a bit of the information about the supplier. Um, I can specify which site, if it's a multi-site business, I can specify which site I'm from. Um, and then I can go down and add the necessary items that I want to procure um, from my supplier. Again, this can be item description lookup. This is great, especially when you may have some specific suppliers you are contracted to work with and you can set those up in your system so you ensure the governance that your staff only procures from those people. So um, I want to book some um, conference accommodation um, and I can add further details related to it um, from a financial and accounting perspective as well. I can put my reasons in, I can put the amount in there, um, I can give a description and I can add multiple items on the same purchase requisition. So throughout this process, you'll see we provided a, we, we made it really easy from a user user point of view, user experience point of view. It's all about pick lists, uh, making sure all the mandatory fields are capturing the relevant information, um, and and making it easy for the staff essentially to use a form like this. So once I'm happy with this, the total is auto calculated. I can submit the form, and this form is is converted to a, a convenient. PDF format, which is then received within our document management system uh, and can be then allocated for approval to the relevant site manager, for example, for approval before it's headed off to purchasing for procuring that uh, product. So these are the three key, uh, I guess, um, methods which uh, we can work with to start with to really uh, file the document. Um, one was from email, one was from MFP scanner, one was convert your paper forms. Now, what I also want to show you is how easy it is. Um, just give me a second. Bring this up in my... So, uh, what I want to show you is how easy it is to also file the documents directly within the document management system. And I'll, and I'll show you how you would do not need to rename the document. Uh, and the system will pretty much utilize the keywords which, which we would have got from the web form, which we would have got from the data we would have input at the MFT when we were scanning in, um, or via the email subject line uh, to uh, rename the document and file the document with. So just stepping out of this for a second, uh, moving into my document management system here. So this is what the document management system pretty much looks like. Uh, it's got a very Windows uh, look and feel to it, as you can see. Um, it's uh, got your main navigation pane here on the left. So that's our repository. Um, all the documents get filed through here automatically. Uh, everything is driven by the system. The folder structures are fully auto-generated uh, without any sort of user intervention. So if I was filing my um, say, for example, uh, supplier invoices, I could set up a folder structure like so um, under finance accounts payable um, by the first letter of the supplier name, then the folder with the supplier name, then the next folder could be the month and year that invoice was received in. Uh, and then the last piece of information in that structure would be the document itself. And I can have that filed automatically in that structure without the need for anyone having to create that folder structure. So those documents that we just processed using those three methods I showed you would have been filed automatically here. Uh, and for the purchase requisition, we could have triggered a task like so for it to be approved by the purchasing manager, for example. Um, now, what you can also do is easily and conveniently drag and drop your documents that you want to file into your in-tray here and file them. Now, a lot of our clients use this functionality uh, to file uh, and use this solution to file pretty much any kind of document in their business. So it could be uh, a tax invoice, it could be employment contracts, uh, it could be confidential CEO board papers like your funding proposals, um, it could be processing your staff's lead forms, uh, or it could be processing the timesheets, 
or it could even be your customer orders, your sales orders, etc. Um, uh, and also, your, you know, uh, incident and injury forms related to your OHNS processes. So it's a very, very flexible system. So when the document is first dragged into the in-tray, the first thing the solution does is completes the OCRing of each bit of text on that document. So if you follow my cursor, I can now individually select the text here. So the first thing that I have to do when a document hits the system first is attach some keywording or metadata to it. So the system now knows, uh, okay, that's an invoice, uh, that's, uh, and it has some intelligence around the document and it can use that inf information to then uh, rename the document and file the document. If I have received the document by mistake or uh, if it's not for me, then I can send it to another user in the business and send it to their in-tray as well. Um, I can set it up for barcode recognition. So for the documents with barcodes on them, like my timesheets, I can automatically process the barcodes from here as well. So let's go ahead and uh, apply some keywording here. So I am going to, hang on, let me try that again. So I have a bunch of different keyword forms. Uh, all these can be set up based on user roles in a company. If I manage contracts, I would only see the keyword form for contracts, for example, or if I was a health and safety officer, uh, I would only see the incident form over here. Um, so today I'm, I'm gonna show you um, how we can tag metadata really quickly related to a supplier invoice. So uh, it's already picked up the short name there. Um, I can see that there is a purchase order on this invoice. So I can simply click on that information and you can see it's tagged that information directly there. I have not had to type any information there. Uh, what I can do next is I can look up the PO number as well. So we can configure this in the system to look up purchase orders uh, from a database view of the finance or the ERP system that's uh, where it was generated. So you can see that the, the purchase order exists. We can see the purchase order value and amount. I can say, okay, I can scroll down and confirm the value matches the invoice amount, which it does. Uh, what it also does is auto-populated the supplier name and location for us. I can then go ahead and simply tag other metadata such as the invoice number. Um, I can scroll down and tag the invoice amount as well. I'm not doing any sort of typing as you can see. I can then classify this document as an accounts payable invoice. Uh, if I want to link the record to the purchase order, then I can link the document as well to the purchase order. Um, the, for the people who understand how finance uh, and accounts payable processes work, you'll recognize the GL code uh, form here as well. So you can allocate GL codes manually from pick list, et cetera, and associate that with an invoice as well. If it was a contract form, you would have had the contract number, you would have had the contracted parties and details in here. Um, so that's you can do that if you like. Uh, we've not made it mandatory, but you can set it up as mandatory and it'll force the user to input that information. Um, you can add some extra text if you like. Um, I can set up permissions as well. So I can give specific permissions to users that can use the system, whether it's read, write, et cetera. So right now I've given it to everyone. So as long as I'm happy with this information, with the information that I've tagged, I can click on OK. Uh, what the system does then is looks for duplicates and ensures you're not filing the same document again. So as you can see here, the system has found a duplicate uh, and it's asking us if it wants to create a reference. Some of us like to file the du duplicates, mark it as a duplicate. Some of us don't want to file it. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and file it again as a duplicate there. And that moves out of my in-tray and that document has now gone and gotten filed automatically under the correct folder structure, which I demonstrated to you earlier. And you can see it's sitting there with the other duplicate document, which it had picked up during the filing process. So this filing structure, finance, accounts payable, first alphabet of the supplier name, the subfolder with the supplier name, the month and year of the invoice is completely auto-generated. Uh, unlike in, in network folders, uh, repositories, uh, Google Docs, Do Dropbox, you don't have to go in and create folders and depend on people to drag and drop files into it, rename files. Even this file name 
which is nothing but the purchase order number and the document type has been generated by our system. And this is something which we can configure and work out what's uh, for each client specifically what their needs are and set the system up with. So that's how easy it is to file documents, whether you're using a MFT, whether you're using a web form, whether it's being uh, uh, coming via, whether it's via email or whether it's simply tagging it within the solution itself and filing it. So, so that was um, store. So moving on now. So, so what I want to show you next is workflows. So to eliminate that flow of paper in the office and, and stop having to carry documents over to each other's desks or, or even to email each other documents, I'm going to demonstrate the easy to use workflow, workflow functionality next. So moving back to the solution, you can see in my tasks area here, I've got uh, there were earlier five invoices that had to be processed. I've set up subtasks of different types of tasks I may be performing in the business, and I can see there's six invoices that are greater than $500 in value that need to be approved by me. So these would be sitting in my task queue. And uh, I would have also received an email notification saying, Leo, that you've received an invoice from Dave, for example, for approval. Please review this. So I would have clicked on that email in the link. It would have opened up the solution for me and taken me straight to this screen where I need to process my invoice. So now I can have a look at this invoice. I can review the information on this invoice. Um, I can annotate on this. Um, I can highlight information on this invoice. I can say, uh, for example, this is a sample invoice. There's nothing in the description field. Um, I can add a little sticky note to it and say, uh, missing line item um, and you can see from an audit and compliance point of view every annotation that I'm applying the system's capturing the user details and the date on when that annotation was applied whether it's my highlight uh, the highlight I applied there or whether it's the sticky note um, I can then also use the stamp tool to apply stamps and I can say you know what I want to cancel this invoice because uh, there's no line items in this I need a better description so I can apply that. I can move these annotations around. None of these change the document properties really. It's just a, 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 a layer over the document and essentially available to users to make the system more user friendly and easy to use. Um, what I can also do is I can chat on the document. Now, a problem that happens with uh, typical solutions out there is users tend to move out of that system and go to email when they want to chase up something. Um, now, when it comes to audit time uh, and uh, you are asked where, uh, who approved an invoice, uh, when it was approved, where's the evidence of that, um, you, you're suddenly trolling through your email inbox, et cetera, trying to find that information. So rather than doing that, we've given this chat functionality here where I can chat with users and I can say to, for example, user one, um, this, Invoice seems incorrect. Please have a look at the highlighted information. And then I can post that message against the audit trail and chat feed of that specific invoice. So user one would receive an email notification. He can log into his solution. He can see that message uh, and then he can reply on that message and, and take the necessary action and maybe cancel that invoice, etc. If I was, however, on the flip side, happy with that invoice, then all I had to do was pass this workflow forward, approve that invoice and it moves on to the next user in the workflow. So I can say OK, and that moves out of my workflow here. Um, however, if for whatever reason that invoice was not or that document was not meant for me for approval, I could uh, straight away hand off that workflow to the relevant user. Or um, if I was under the pump and I, was, uh, I had a couple of hundred documents to review and approve, I could delegate that workflow as well. If I was going on holiday, for example, then I can assign a substitute who can handle my tasks and activities for a predefined time frame. And then I can pick up from where uh, when I'm back. 
So in a nutshell, that's what the workflow functionality looks like uh, and how you can sort of start looking at eliminating that flow of paper in your office and, and also um, having your business uh, essentially being run on email in parallel to your Windows network folder structure, for example. So as you've seen, the filing is driven by the solution. The documents are never misfiled. Um, so you can always get to a specific folder location, retrieve them easily. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can do that. Um, and also um, the search functionality available in the solution. So moving back to the DMS there. So search is where uh, it gets really, really powerful because essentially um, the system becomes, uh, as I like to call it, Google for your business. Uh, you can not only search by drill, going down to a specific folder like I showed you there and look up the documents. Over time, your repositories will become massive. You'll start storing thousands of documents in here. And from our experience, I've seen our customers don't even go down to the repository level and look for documents. They love to come into search here and using the search bar there, start typing out whatever information they remember from a piece of paper. They may not remember the document name. They may not remember um, the supplier name, but they may remember what they ordered. Um, so they can start typing that out here. So if I was looking for the term, um, I think we filed the invoice called Connie Dexon. So if I start typing that here, the system will start giving me possible matches with every term that exists in its database. Now that term, like I said earlier, could be the name of the document, uh, could be in the folder name of the document. Uh, it could also be within the content of the document. So I know I'm looking for Connie Dexon, so I can double click on that now. And very quickly, it will bring up every document in the system with that name. So you can see there's five documents in the system with that name. It's also brought up the folder uh, with that name in the system. So I can now easily and quickly go through this. Uh, and this is the one we just processed in the demo earlier. Uh, and you can see it's pulled that term Conidexin from inside the document. I can search within the document as well uh, and bring up the terms. And you can see that's now being highlighted in green on the document, wherever it exists on the document. Now, for example, if I had more than, this is pretty straightforward, this search uh, functionality, but if I had uh, 150 hits in my search result, then I could add further search filters and narrow my search result down. So I could have come in here and I'd said that, you know what, the documents I'm searching for are from within the last 30 days, 10 days, etc. Or I could have come in and said, I know the user that filed it, so I want to filter by just the administrator, for example. Or I could get, then get really specific and say, I'm searching from within my invoices, and I only want to search based on the supplier name, for example. And I could add that to my search criteria. And all that will do is keep narrowing your search results down so you can easily and quickly bring up that document that you're looking for. Um, you could do it by document status as well. So for example, in invoices, you could set it up based on all the invoices that are overdue and you can set that as your favorite search. So you don't even have to search and just click on your favorite search and it'll bring up all the overdue invoices in the system at that, at that point in time. So hopefully uh, that gives you an idea on how you can uh, cut back on the time spent, and if you go back to my initial few slides, uh, by staff uh, working with documents and uh, cutting back on that 50% of the time that's spent on chasing information and documents using a system like this. So here's a few processes where there is scope for quick returns. AP is the most common one and benefits uh, from a quick ROI by reducing the cost of processing each invoice, as I showed you in my demonstration. Um, by automating the procure to pay process, um, organizations can control, monitor their spend better. Um, you can onboard staff quickly and efficiently uh, by utilizing the staff, on, uh, by automating the staff onboarding process. Um, any document approval process can be automated uh, and moved from manual, uh, cutting down on the flow of paper uh, and time taken. Uh, also, as I've shown you earlier, by converting your 
paper forms to electronic forms. You can eliminate paper right at the start of the process. Um, you can improve on your speed to cash by digitizing your proof of delivery process. Um, you can manage your contract life cycle better through automated filing, renewals, reminders. Um, you can uh, manage your incident and injuries uh, and any other OHNS processes as per reg regulatory requirements in a, in a more streamlined fashion. Uh, and lastly, you know, digitization of your quality and control processes is another example that provides quick ROI. So in essence, hours and hours of work have been turned into minutes. Um, allowing you to stay compliant to regulatory requirements. You can now redeploy staff when they're really needed. Um, there's improved flow of documents and information across the business. Um, you cut down on the red tape. You cut down on unnecessary steps and manual interventions through automation. Through the automation, um, your documents and information are now available on demand, whether in the office, at home, or at a client site. Uh, you complete your tasks quicker. It's, it's easier to do the job. I hope I've demonstrated that. Um, there is much better knowledge management with minimal downtime in case of staff attrition. Uh, and ultimately, at the end of the day, um, your staff is happy. Uh, it's a more productive work environment and, and people actually look forward to coming into work. And all of this allows you to do things you've never done before. I mean, this could mean uh, expanding your operations or spending more time with family, whatever your goals or priorities may be, you now have the time to pursue them. So by simply moving from paper to manual process or manual processes to an electronic document management solution, we've seen uh, a solution like ours, it typically pays off within six months on average. Uh, we've had clients where it's paid off within a month as well. So it really comes down to your specific requirements, your specific um, issues, uh, and we can configure, tweak the solution to cater to those specific challenges. Okay, great. That brings us to the end of today's webinar. I hope you've been sending through your questions in the chat box. I'm going to go back through things tonight and answer each of the questions over the next couple of days. Also, please do not forget to fill out the short webinars feedback survey form at the end of the session. So that's a wrap, folks. Thank you for your time and have a great rest of your day. Um, bye for now.